Welcome, my name is Fatima Sequera, and I'm a chemist in the Division of Lifecycle API, where I review DMF submissions, as well as manage our internal adequate additional comment letter request process. Our presentation today is to help you understand the Division of Lifecycle API's communication strategy so you can make well-informed decisions about your DMF and referencing application. We will look at the purpose, content, of timing of key letters sent by our division throughout the DMF review process. There are three general categories of letters, early communication, deficiency and comment communication, and informational communication. As we are part of the ANDA's GDUFA timeline, it is important that you respond to DMF letters promptly to not hold up the approval of your referencing application. By responding to letters appropriately, will increase the likelihood of a first cycle and approval. Early communications are in place to protect the ANDA GDUFA timeline through a pre-screening process. On, for DMFs, you will receive a completeness assessment, also known as a CA. This prevents DMFs from being referenced that do not have enough information to undergo scientific review or are not eligible to be referenced because they do, have not paid their DMF fees. On the ANDA side, we will see a timely consults and early IR. The goal of this is to prevent hidden facilities from your DMF or consults that could hold up approval. When these sticking points are identified early in your ANDA review process, the agency can make sure that the right resources are in place to prevent delay. Deficiency communication is sent out when an assessor has technical issues with your DMF submission that need to be addressed before the DMF can be considered adequate. There are two types of letters that can be received by a holder. The first and most common is a complete response letter, a CR. The second being an informational request, an IR letter. The main difference between these two types of letters from a high vantage point is their timeline. A CR letter, usually you have 30 days to respond to, whereas an IR is usually on a shorter time frame, about two weeks. The reason that the agency sends out IR letters is so that we can resolve issues in your DMF without having to issue another CR letter, which could affect your ANDA's timeline. There are other ways that you can also prevent a CR letter that are also as simple as responding to your letters on time, one of which being respond to all comments and deficiencies in your letter. The next being read through your letter and confirm that you understand that, that you understand the deficiencies and comments. If additional clarification is needed, you should reach out to the DMF OGD mailbox for an email exchange. Third, if your primary DMF has secondary referencing DMFs, you should check on the status. The primary DMF cannot be considered adequate if the secondary DMFs are inadequate. And I would like to remind you that unsolicited D amendments submitted for DMF late in an ANDA's review cycle could interfere with the ANDA GDUFA timeline. Now we'll look at comment communications. So comments can come as part of a CR letter, but also a standalone as part of an adequate but additional comments letter. The benefit to a DMF holder is that these letters are sent when the DMF is adequate. And therefore, we are preventing low risk comments from delaying your referencing application's approval. These are supposed to be minor comments that do not impact the drug substance specification or impurity profile. We ask that you respond to these comments within 30 days. If you take more than 60 days, please check with the DMF OGD mailbox to make sure that your 
that the, your response will not interfere with the action being taken on a referencing application. We do like to remind you that after six months, if you have not responded to these comments, they could be converted to deficiencies and a CR letter may be issued. On the right, you'll see the top 10 most common comments we've received we have sent out over the last six months. I would suggest that you take a look. Fixing these issues now and being proactive could save you time and prevent you from getting an adequate additional comment letter and just getting an adequate letter. Informational communications is probably the best type of communication you will receive. The reason why is now your DMF is considered adequate. The first type of communication you might receive is a first adequate letter. It serves as a way to signal that your DMF is adequate and that you, the DMF holder, should not send any late cycle unsolicited amendments, which could interfere or slash disturb your ANDA's approval process. These are usually sent out 30 days after a DMF is considered adequate. The next form of communication you will receive is a no further comments letter. No further comments letter is sent out after both the DMF and referencing application is approved or tentatively approved. And, we, and those are usually issued 30 days after, after the ANDA is approved. Now remember that an adequate additional comment letter can be, can be received before or after either of these two letters and needs, still needs to be responded to. If you have any questions about the status of your DMF, please reach out to DMF OGG, OGG mailbox to ask. On this slide, I've summarized the key information that we have discussed, the types of letters, the suggested DMF folder response time, the review time that we take internally, as well as the purpose of the letters. Feel free to ask any questions you might have about these letters to us during the, our Q&A session. I would like to end with some general reminders. I would like to stress the importance of responding to all comments and deficiencies in the letters you receive. I would like to make a plea from you as a primary reviewer to stay where you provide, when you provide data in an appendix clearly state where it is located in your submission. Remember to confirm that all critical facilities listed in S2.1 manufacturing are listed in the 356H form of your referencing ANDA. We do not want to, to hold up your ANDA's approval due to hidden facilities. Remember from an administrative point of view, to have your DMF subject and DMF title be the same. Remember that if you have issues with your electronic CTD formatting, please contact the eSub team at fda.hhs.gov. Remember to provide a location of LOAs for each DMF and referencing party. And you can always contact the DMF OGD mailbox for any questions or concerns you have over due dates. In all of this to summarize, please be proactive. Well, thank you for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, please submit them to us via email by clicking on the link on our workshop poster page. Questions received by February 15th will be addressed in our poster question and answer session on March 4th. Questions received after that and up until March 19th will be addressed on our April 9th webinar for posters and presentations. If you have found this topic interesting, I suggest you check out Altsala Salvam's poster on administrative processes or Davis Ganji's presentation on effective communication strategies. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day.